Oklahoma Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen made headlines over the past week after flying overseas to Afghanistan as the United States was pulling troops out of that country. He says his goal was to get Americans out of Afghanistan. Two News Oklahoma anchor Justin Fisher spoke to the Republican congressman about what he experienced and what he thinks about the Biden administration's response. Congressman Mark Wayne Mullen represents the interests of Oklahoma's 2nd Congressional District, but recently he made a trip overseas to bring Americans home. I got a phone call from, um, from an employee of mine that, uh, that said, hey, there's a young lady uh, named Miriam and she's got three kids and she's stuck there and, and she needs out. And so we made contact with her and spoke to her for a little bit and you could hear in her voice that she was very scared. Mullen tells me he personally went because the plane needed a congressional sponsorship to land and he had to be on board. And that's how this whole thing started. I wasn't trying to cowboy or be Rambo or anything like that. Uh, I was going with a professional team, but they had to have me. And how do you say no? Mullen also says he was compelled to help. How the heck do you watch some of these videos of people in New York and people in San Francisco and L.A. walking around someone getting beat up? How do you do that? How do you not jump in and help when someone's getting wrong? That's not how we're raised in rural, in rural parts of the country. We're going to jump in and we're going to do what we can. And to help takes money and lots of it. You can't operate in that country without cash. You, you have checkpoints. One time it cost us $2,000 to get to Miriam and her three kids to get them to the airport to, in Hakai just to be turned away. So it's very, very, very expensive when you go through every one of these checkpoints. He says the money came from nonprofits who wanted to help. On reports, he threatened embassy staff, including the ambassador in Tajikistan, when trying to bring cash into the country, Mullen had this to say. Now that's absolutely so false, it's ridiculous. I actually talked to that ambassador and he was apologizing to me, saying that that didn't happen. Now that the U.S. has officially pulled all soldiers out of Afghanistan, the congressman issued a statement on his official website, reading in part, quote, one motto of our military is leave no man behind. But today, that's exactly what President Biden did. American exit did not have to be this way, and there must be accountability for this complete and utter failure. I asked the congressman what accountability looks like to him. I think Blinken, I think General Milley, and I think General McKenzie needs to be relieved of duty, duty immediately. I think they should be relieved of command, and, 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 and I think Secretary Blinken should step down immediately. As far as when it comes to, to, to President Biden, I don't know where that leads, but there needs to be a hearing and investigation on what he did. Representative Mullen says those he teamed up with will continue to work on the ground in Afghanistan until it is too unsafe to do so. Justin Fisher, 2 News, Oklahoma. All right, Justin, thank you. Well, the woman and her children that Mullen went to help made it out of the country on Monday morning. The Senate Armed Services Committee has announced the first round of hearings that will examine the withdrawal of American forces from Afghanistan. Senator Jim Inhofe, of course from Oklahoma, is a notable member on that committee. They say their main goals are to determine lessons learned from the 20-year conflict and ensure accountability at each level of involvement. Catholic Charities announced this week that 800 Afghan refugees will be coming to Tulsa in the coming weeks as the city prepares to welcome them. 2 News reporter Jeanette Casada talked with one local organization that has helped immigrants and refugees in their resettlement journey. The YWCA is among several organizations in the Tulsa area that works closely with refugees. Typically what our role is, is to provide ongoing support after families have arrived in Tulsa, including helping finding first employment, English classes, legal services, interpretation and translation services. Huda Abdul Hamid first started working directly with refugees as a YWCA refugee caseworker. She helped them find employment and connected them to social and health services. It was something she could directly relate to. My family used to work uh, as a contractor with the U.S. military back in my country. So they got threatened uh, from Malaysia. Uh, and then by uh, 2007, and they apply as a refugee and they came. She and her three daughters are Iraqi refugees. They arrived in the United States in 2014. She says leaving the only life she knew was not easy. I cried several times, several years, and uh, if I'm doing the right thing, the wrong thing, I was struggling to find myself, to find my identity. When she first arrived to the U.S., she thought she could start working right away but was faced with another challenge. Second 
challenge uh, was the language barrier. Although she has a master's of nursing degree from her country of origin, she could not practice her profession because she needed to learn English, which she managed to do in five months. Now she's the interpretation and translation services program manager for the YWCA and helps connect refugees with interpretation services. The day I moved here it was like really, I can tell it's a different state and everybody was like friend, friendly. Uh, with me, with my girls. Her organization is preparing to provide resources to 800 Afghan refugees coming to Tulsa. She says she's hoping to offer them the warm welcome she once received. That was Jeanette Casada reporting for us there. All right, still ahead, teaching children about the wonders of reading. Yeah, why it's more important than ever to get new books into kids' hands and how you can help out coming up next. And unfortunately, more wildfire smoke is on the way and hotter temperatures for the weekend in your latest forecast up next. Over the past five years, Two News Oklahoma and the Scripps Howard Foundation have put thousands of books into the hands of local children in need through our If You Give a Child a Book campaign. Now, the campaign is typically an internal fundraiser for our employees, but this year we're reaching out to our viewers so we can make an even bigger impact. As 2 News anchor Julie Chen tells us, what the effects that COVID is having on our classrooms, the need now is greater than ever. This comic book should get you up to date uh, on our story so far. Aysen Wengu is a super reader, especially when it comes to superheroes. His favorites include Captain Underpants and Lego CD. And this Walt Whitman Elementary School student is grateful for in-person learning, where he's able to read story books instead of screens. With COVID in the last year and the amount of remote learning that we've been doing, our students haven't had access to physical texts. Many of our kiddos spent last year at home learning online, and as a result, they only had access to whatever their parents could provide for them. So if mom and dad couldn't get to the library or there wasn't access to new books, then all they had access to were digital texts online. And with more COVID uncertainty this school year, now more than ever, it's critical to get books to kids who need them most. So it's really important for them to have access to these physical books, to be able to understand how to turn pages, how to track words on the page, um, and just really understand how books work in a physical, traditional way. So the Scripps Howard Foundation and 2 News Oklahoma have chosen Walt Whitman Elementary, a Title I school in North Tulsa, to receive the next donation in our If You Give a Child a Book program. Because one of the biggest keys to helping our community is one of the easiest, simply putting a book in a child's hands. For our students, when they see new books, they're so excited by them. And while the library is full of books that kids can borrow, there's something special about books that belong to you. That's why in the If You Give a Child a Book campaign, each student selects 10 free books that they get to keep and take home. They can share with their families, with their siblings. They can show off their reading skills that they're learning in the classroom to families at home. And it's just something that they can, to keep that's their own, that they don't have to worry about taking and sharing with other people. Studies show, regardless of how many books a family has, each addition to their home library helps children do better in school and in life. Just ask Eisen. He'll tell you, if you give a child a book, you're feeding body, mind, and soul. I like reading so I can grow my brain. Every $5 you donate will result in a free book for a local student who needs it most. You can text 2 CARES to 345345 or head on over to KJRH.com to donate. Since its inception company-wide, this campaign has distributed over half a million books. And with your help, that number will keep growing. Julie Chin, 2 News, Oklahoma. Now, your 2 News, Oklahoma weather, sponsored by Executive Homes. 
We had morning lows this morning down into the 50s and 60s. Tomorrow morning, mainly into the 60s. 60, 60 degrees, our forecast in Tahlequah, and 61 for our viewers in Pryor. So it was the coolest morning so far this month, reminding us that fall is just a short time away. This morning at the Tulsa International Airport, we went down to 60 degrees. The last time it was this cool was back on June 21st when we reached 61 degrees. And again, lows into the 60s once again for tomorrow.